What type of hockey training should you be doing in the off season? That was a question I got asked and I'm going to answer that in today's episode of Ask 247 Hockey. I'm Zach, head coach here at 247 Hockey, and I got a question in about players wanting to know what type of workouts they should be doing and how they should set up their training for the off season, okay? Now this is very important because the off season is really your opportunity to excel and improve, all right? Development happens in the off season as you move up to higher and higher levels because that's where you can get stronger, faster, you can improve your skating, you can improve your skills, your stick handling, your shooting, you can improve your hockey sense, you can improve your awareness, you can improve all of these areas, you can really focus on you. During the season, a lot of times you're focused on team systems, you're focused on learning team activities, but you're not focused just on you, yourself as a player. And the nice thing about the off season is when you get away from your team environment, it really comes down to what players are going to put the time, the energy, and the effort in. If you can work a couple hours a day on your training, you're going to pass other players if you're doing the right thing. So that's when you can get into a situation where you know maybe other players are better than you or maybe you're trying to make a team and just by structuring and doing the right things in the offseason, you can pass other players. All right? So... Let's talk about some of the keys here and some of the mistakes that I see players making a lot when it comes to the off-season training. The first thing that you have to have, and one of the things I see a lot of players not doing, you have to have a plan, all right? A specific plan that's gonna tell you exactly what you need to do every single day, okay? What days of the week you should be training, what you should be working on, all the way through. And it should ideally build on each other. So as you get as you get uh, are doing some things, it's getting more difficult. Or as you're getting closer to the season, you're working on certain things that are getting you ready more and more for on ice play. Okay. So ideally, it should build up towards the season, and it should build on top of each other, so that you're constantly challenging yourself more and more and more, and not just doing the same thing. Okay. So now, what type of plans are good? What type of plans are bad? All that. So if you're first and foremost, if you're going in with no plan, you're just you know, setting yourself up to fail, period, okay? There's nothing I can stress more than having a specific plan, having something written out in front of you every single day. You have to know every single day what you're doing, what days of the week that you're training, all right? Ideally, you should be training five to six times a week if you wanna be an elite player. Now, that can be anywhere from 30 minutes to two hours depending on what you're doing, how you're doing it, and how your off-season is structured. And I'll get more into how you can be spending that time, all right? So, Five to six days a week, you need to have a plan that covers each week, covers exactly what you're doing each day, what exercise, what drills, and that should be something that is brought with you either on your phone or on a sheet of paper every single day. You should be filling it out so you can see what you did previously. The most important thing, period. So now there's good plans and there's bad plans, right? Bad plans are anything that has to do with bodybuilding, weightlifting, building more muscle so you can look good, all right? So if you get something off of a website that's just, just about strength and you know gaining muscle, so men's health, men's fitness, women's health, women's fitness, bodybuilding.com, any website that is just about working out, training, strength, and looking good, that's gonna be horrible for hockey, period. There's too many other players that are training the right way that are gonna pass you by, okay? Another option that's okay but not as good is if you're just doing the workout with your teams, okay, and you're doing a workout with every, with everybody else. So maybe it's a summer camp, a summer program, a team. Now, why isn't this as good? The best thing that you can do is focusing on your specific strengths and weakness. So having a program that's designed around the specific areas that you need to work on the most. Do you need to get faster? Do you need to get stronger? Do you need to improve your skills? Okay, and then also a program that's very well-rounded. So it's gonna emphasize those areas that you need to improve the most, all right? So you can spend a little bit extra time on those areas that you need to improve the most, and then also, it's very well-rounded. So you should be working on all the different tools that you need to become a better hockey player. So the perfect off-season program should include something for strength, explosiveness, and power. That's, those things should be working on your skating. The lower body strength is so important. So you should be doing lower body strength two to three times a week, explosiveness two to three times a week, which is a lot of single leg, a lot of plyo plyometrics, a lot of lateral movement, lateral jumps. And then speed, okay? So you should be working on that speed, quickness, agility, lateral movement again, um, 
stick handling and shooting, extremely important. So you should be doing off-ice stick handling and shooting at least every other day, at least every other day. Doing a little bit of on ice training in the beginning, and then the on ice training gets more and more as the season goes at the off season goes on. So that when you're a month out, maybe two months out before your trials, before your season, you're getting on the ice two to three times a week in a very high intense tempo environment. All right, that's you're getting pushed, not just going out there and going through the motions, but you're actually getting pushed. All right. And then something that's going to focus on your nutrition, your stretching, your rest and recovery. And then also, what are you doing to work on your hockey sense, your positioning? All right, are you studying game film? Do you have certain areas that you should be working on to be able to study game film? And all of that is what goes into an ideal hockey workout in the off season so that you're improving in every single area, but then you're emphasizing the areas that you're the weakest in, okay? You need to improve in every single area. Do not just focus on strength and speed. Strength and speed. So many players think that's all they need is to get stronger and faster, but then what happens is as they move up to higher and higher levels, they realize that they have to have the right skills, they have to have the proper shooting, because the game's happening so fast at those levels that if your skills get a little bit behind and your shooting gets a little bit behind, then you're not going to be able to keep up. So the off-ice skills is extremely important. The position is extremely important. The speed, the power component is extremely important. And those are the tools that you really need to work on in the off-season. So you should have a program that touches all of that. And ideally, you're not just following the same thing everybody else is doing. Because guess what? If you want to be an elite hockey player and you want to pass other players, if, you, if you're doing the same things they are every single day, how are you getting any better than they are? right? You got to be working out harder and working out smarter than other players. That means doing more intense workouts and doing smarter drills that are more hockey specific, that are more tailored to exactly what you need to improve. And I see too many players in the offseason get this wrong, okay? They don't have the plan. They focus only on strength and trying to get stronger and building muscle, which means they're going to end up being slower, not as explosive. They're going to have less skill than other players. And that's why other players pass you by. Just getting stronger is not going to be good enough to make you a better hockey player, period, all right? The best hockey players at an elite level are not only strong, but they have amazing stick handling and shooting skills. They're very dynamic, they're quick, they're agile. It's all those tools that you have to be working on if you want to be an elite hockey player. So if you're ready to get started with something like this at least, and at least understand what it's going to take to train like an elite player and how to include all of these different components, I have a free hockey workout that covers all of these different areas, okay? We have a different one workout for each different area. You can go to freehockeyworkout.com and download that. That's freehockeyworkout.com. It's an intense training. It's only for dedicated players. Okay, don't go there if you're not dedicated. It's very intense hockey training. If you go to freehockeyworkout.com, you can sign up and you can get a free workout that's going to cover explosiveness, strength, skill, stick handling, shooting, speed, all of those different components we have a different workout for. So that way you can see what I'm talking about in terms of how you have to organize all of these different workouts. And then if you're extremely dedicated and you're doing these workouts, I recommend doing two a days, okay? Get up early in the morning, spend 30 minutes working on a specific skill like speed and quickness or stick handling or shooting to work on that specific skill and then go later for your main workout of the day. Maybe that's with your team or something else, okay? And then if you want, you can either do another 15 or 20 or 30 minutes later on in the evening. Okay, that's how you're going to start to get that advantage. That's how you're going to start to get that edge. And that's why we include these workouts at freehockeyworkout.com because you'll be able to get some of these trainings that you can incorporate into your routine. Even if you've already got a really good off-season program, you need to incorporate some of these other components so you can do these early morning workouts, these workouts later in the evening. And it's that extra 30 minutes to an hour a day that's going to help you stand out and become an elite hockey player. All right? Head over to freehockeyworkout.com. I hope this helped you become a better hockey player and understand how to plan and get the most out of your off-season workouts.